I'm John Buchanan, and in this video, what we're going to do is to work with the relationship between an audio loop and the sampler in Logic Pro. What I've got within this project is two synth sequences, and I've got an audio loop that I've dragged in. And I don't really like this loop, but I like the component elements that make up the sounds within it. I've got a kick drum and a snare that I think work quite well, but I'm less fond of the pattern. Let's just hear how it sounds right now. It's only two bars long. Okay, so the beat loop itself sounds like this. Okay, so I quite like the kick and I quite like the snare, but I don't really like the way that the pattern's working at the moment. It sort of feels like it's ignoring the groove of the other elements of the piece. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this audio loop and I'm going to click on it whilst holding down the control button. And one of the options that's available to me is to convert this to a new sampler track. Now what this basically means is Logic is going to take the audio data here and it's going to convert it and put it into the EXS24 sampler. But it can actually do that in one of two separate ways. So when I select that option, first of all, it's going to ask me whether or not I want to create zones for the sampler from the entire region, which is this option here, or from transient markers. Now let's go with option one to start with. If I select the region option, what it's going to do when I press OK is to convert the entire loop to become triggerable from one note. So in other words, down here now on this sampler instrument, if I open up the MIDI, I've got one note which is triggering the entire loop because the entire region is now being triggered from one place. Okay, so I've still got the same loop. It's the same grooves. It isn't really quite what I want. But while we're here, let's just see what we can actually do with this now that it's been created as a single region. You can see I haven't actually had to drag that audio into Logic myself. It's been converted for me. And if I press the edit button within the XS24 sampler, I can see exactly how this sound has been mapped. So I can see it's being triggered from key C1, which is down here at the bottom of my keyboard. And I can see that the key range is limited to just that note. So if I play C1, I can trigger that sample, but if I play any other key, I'm not triggering it because the note isn't assigned. So let's just ch try a couple of things out. It might be quite interesting to change the original pitch to, let's say, C3 in the middle of the keyboard. And let's also change the note range so that it's running from C1 to C4 which I can just do here within the editor. What that now means is that the original loop is being triggered from C3. So I've still got that same control, but it also means that I can play it back across a much wider range. Now, as you probably know, effectively what happens with sampling is that in addition to triggering different pitches as we play different notes, we're changing the speed, the playback speed of the entire loop as well. So an octave down, it's gonna be half speed. And two octaves down, it's going to be a quarter speed. There's the snare, really distorted and sort of broken up now. Similarly, an octave higher, it's going to be double speed. So we could do something kind of interesting along these lines. If I close the editor down, what I could do would be to save these changes so they're part of the way that I've actually assigned this loop to start with. And we can come back into the MIDI. So what I need to do first of all is to make sure that I'm moving the key note, which is triggering the loop. It was on C1 by default, but I need to take that up two octaves to C3, which I can do very easily. There's a really useful key command for this. I can select the note, and what I can do is to hold down Shift and Alt and octave up. And that, what that will do is to jump up in octaves. So I'm going up to C3 in just two steps. And then what I can do is think, okay, well actually I might introduce just at this moment here, I might double this note up to C4, which is where it's playing back at double speed. And I might only have that come in right at the end of the loop. So I've got this little fill that's emerging and at the same time we could maybe trigger this as well so that it's also playing back an octave lower. Let's just move that back to the very beginning of bar one. So if I want to keep working with loops, what I've done is to convert this region straight into the sampler and I'm still working in big long chunks of data but that wasn't what I set out to do when I first thought about importing this loop into the sampler. What I wanted to do was to kind of mine the loop for the sounds that are within it, but then maybe program my own pattern. So what I'm actually going to do is to throw this track away, and I'm going to delete it from here as well, and we're going to come back to the original loop, which has been muted by Logic, 
in the process of turning it into a sampler instrument, and I'm going to unmute it. I'm going to select the toolbox, come into the mute tool, and simply just unmute it. We're back kind of to where we started. So this time, when I can control click this, uh, this region, what I'm going to do is to convert it again to a new sampler track. But rather than selecting the entire region that I want to work with, instead, I'm going to select the transient markers option. Now, what this means is that Logic is looking at the individual transient hits of this loop, and it's working out how many of those there are, and it's then going to map each one to the next key. Now, what it's done here within this little display is to show me that what this is going to do is to create 33 zones. It's detected 33 transients, which are going to be mapped along my keyboard. Now, it's worth bearing in mind that all you need to do to double check that you get all of those zones set up is to make sure that the trigger note range, the range of keys over which these notes are going to be placed, is bigger, more than the number of zones automatically. It's no good to select, let's say, C2 as your upper range, because what that will do is to give you 12 steps to the keyboard, but it won't give you all 33 steps that have been detected. So when you're doing this, just double check that the range of those trigger notes is wide enough to accommodate the number of zones that have been automatically detected. So when I now press OK, what's going to happen is that we'll get another region within the sampler, but this time, rather than a whole series, or rather than one note you know, playing the whole way through to trigger the entire loop, we get a series of notes a bit like a kind of Rex file. If we see this now, we can see all the individual components. So this is going to sound the same, but you can see that each individual part is now being sliced and triggered ind independently. So at the most basic level, I can see, for instance, that on C1 here, I'm going to obviously going to have my kick drum because this is the first region. And I'm guessing that on beat two, that's going to be a snare. But actually, that's sort of spl spread over a couple of sounds because this is going to be the sort of little decay phase for the snare. And then we've got individual little hits here as well. So as I play up the keyboard, I can trigger the individual parts that I want to use. At the most basic level, I might just isolate these two sounds. And what I could actually do would be to throw away this loop altogether I don't need all of those individual bits and come out of solo mode and think about a pattern that maybe better fits this part that I've programmed. So I've got a more sort of drum machine feel. Let's just quantize those hits as well so that we've got something which feels like it's going to work better within this track and hear this little pattern that I've just played in. And any little timing errors that I've made, like here at the end, I can select these notes and simply move them back to where I want them to go. So what we've done here is to sort of mine this loop for its component elements. I only want two of them, the kick and the snare. I don't need all the little shuffle bits or the in-between hits. I just need these two sounds for a kind of super drum machine sound. Um, and now what I've got is a pattern which is working better within the context of my piece. So what we've done within this video is two separate things, both of which relate to taking an audio file and breaking it up so that it becomes triggerable from the EXS24 sampler. By control clicking a region, we can bring up a dialog box which allows us to convert an audio file into the sampler. We can either do that for the entire region so that the whole loop is triggered from one key, and we spend some time seeing what happens when we change that, edit those notes so that we have access to double speed and half speed playback of that loop as well, and we can see that that can be creative. What we did the second time was to analyze that original drum loop so that the transients, the individual hits within it were mined and assigned to different keys. We didn't need that whole loop. What I wanted to do was just to find a couple of individual sounds, the kick and the snare, which I've now reprogrammed and triggered directly over MIDI so that they become part of this arrangement. <laughs>